the following program is intended for your entertainment. Comments targeted towards people or at people are not to be taken that seriously. If you can't take a joke, this probably is not the program for you to watch. We're just some bowlers trying to have some fun. This is Sports Entertainment. This is Sean's Grudge Matches. All right, Ted, we're here with the grudge matches. We're on the 45 foot flat bob. Here's our contenders today. Ryan Toady, what do you think about him? Uh, Toady's going to struggle. Um, his MO is that he, he is a hard time playing straight by the guard. And this pattern is probably going to demand that as we see AJ playing the one. Well, I'm not on AJ yet. See, Toady's just swinging a little bit and he's going to have over under all day, I think. Well, let's recap real quick here. So today we have seven bowlers. This is the Battle Royal. Elimination match. Well, it's not really an elimination match today. It's just a straight up battle royal because they're bowling eight games, and if they if they're not bowling good, they're just going to quit, right? That's correct. We need an eight game total pinfall. Um, if they uh, if they think that they don't have a chance to catch up pins, then they're just going to uh, just forfeit. Which I see a lot of guys quitting after about four games. And then the top three will face me, the king of tournaments, next week. And the winner of that next week in that fatal four-way match will face you for the SGM world title. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see uh, who gets to bowl you next week. And then I'll have to think of a really good format for you guys. All right, so here's AJ, or Austin Schultz, I guess you call him. You call him AJ. I call him Austin. What do you think his chances are today? Really good. I picked him to win, actually. It's like he's uh, playing up the boards right now, trying to use that uh, one board as the dry board. Smart move. Go to where there's friction. Play just inside of it. Yeah. Who do we have on lane 29? 29, that is Andrew Field, ex-Portage High School bowler. He's kind of come out of nowhere here. Uh, I don't even know him. So why does he want to face me? Or maybe he just wants a shot at your title. I think he wants a shot. He's going to have a hard road. He's really good at hooking it, really good at curving it. He grew up bowling at Camelot, and uh, he can put some revs on the ball. Yeah, he's gonna have a hard time today, though. Care for stuff like that, it'll be good. And there's another bowler there that just uh, came out of the woodwork, Scott Schmall. I think he's gonna do okay. I think yeah. he's gonna do okay. He's already migrated over to the gutter. He's using a lot of surface. Scott told me earlier that uh, he had his boat up or not working. I don't know what it was, but he didn't have the boat out today, so he figured he'd come bowling instead. Good choice. We got A.J. Willis over there. Great straighter player. Pretty accurate. I think him to do pretty well, too, today. Yeah, um, he's a pretty he's good spare good shooter. Yeah. He told me earlier that if uh, he can't get his ball to hook like he wants it, he's going to throw right at the three-pin with rubs on it and shoot his spares and give himself a chance. Yeah, spares today are going to be the key factor in winning this, or at least making the top three to move on to next week. Who, who are you going with, Steve? This is Steve by Curious Steve. Well, uh, how do you say your last name? I don't know. Ted knows. How do you say his last name? Steve by Curious, I think. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pick Ryan number one, Scott Schmall number two, and AJ number three. Okay. Well, who are the other two over there? We see uh, Eric Locker. Eric Locker and Jeremy Belko. Belko. I'm going to say Belko goes dead last, and he'll be first to quit. Uh, You're going to think he's going to quit? I'll take a side bet on that. I'll take a side bet on that. I'll say Belko doesn't quit. He'll stay the whole time. He'll be minus. There's Jeremy there in the he's red and black. Well. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. He's uh, rocking the Cobra. I'm pretty sure it's a gizmo. A gizmo? I'm pretty sure it's a gizmo. Uh, it might help get a few extra revs on the ball. We'll see if it does any good today. Now, what about Eric Locker? We haven't talked about him much. Yeah, uh, Eric Locker's a 
Walker took my side bet. I bet anybody in the building uh, $25 they don't average 200. Walker modified that bet to a uh, 195. He shoots under one under 195. He owes me over 195. I owe him 25. I think that's a that's a shoe win for me. Well, Eric's like a he's kind of like AJ Willis there. You know, kind of straight down the boards. Great spare shooter. Pretty accurate. I'm gonna say that there's a. I'll, I'll take another side bet that he leaves at least eight five sevens today. Okay, well, we'll see what happens here. Well, uh, practice is over, so we'll we'll be back in a little bit to see how they're doing. Today's broadcast is sponsored by Sean'sTournaments.com. King of the Hill, Friday nights, 9.45 p.m. Practice doesn't really come on until 10.10. What do we got bowling this week? June 16th, PBA Badger-like, 52 feet. King of the Hill runs all the way through August 18th. See SeanStermans.com. Tuesday, July 18th. Up, a tornado down eliminator. Here. They're walking down the Tuesday lane. Tuesday night, 6-4. Four. Who's walking down the lane? No? All right, back. All right, we're back in the first game. Everybody seems to be throwing it very fast. I think it's because there's so much oil, the ball's not slowing down. They're just throwing it normal. There's quite a bit of oil out there. You do have to make quite a few adjustments on this, and throwing it faster doesn't seem to be working. Neither does hooking the spares. Hooking spares? Why are we hooking spares on flat? I don't know. You like to bury yourself in a hole to start? Okay. Seems like it. Make it more interesting, maybe? Well, I hope they keep the strategy up next week because uh, I'll eat them up next week. I think it's a really good format for you guys. I'll, next I'll week. spare them all. What, what pen are we going to go with next week? I don't know. I got I to gotta uh, fair. I'm not supposed to know, right? No, it doesn't matter. I told these guys a week early. Hey, I'll bowl on this. If you want me to bowl on this, I'll bowl on this. And okay. these, these guys could have that advantage because they're going to need that extra handicap against me knowing what it was the previous week. Hey, uh, in the comments below, leave your uh, leave your uh, recommendation for pattern, maybe even format, and uh, I'll use that as suggestions for what I pick for next week. All right, sounds good. So, Ted, what's your bet that you got going on today? And who took the bet? Did anybody take the bet? Uh, well, I, 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 my bet was anybody average over two hundred, I give them twenty five dollars. They owe me a dollar a pin in average under two hundred with a cap of twenty five dollars. Okay, so basically, if they average under one seventy five for the day, they only have to pay twenty five bucks. Correct. And nobody took that. So, Locker came up to me and he said, "Well, let's make it one ninety five a pin." So he said, "Over one ninety five, I owe him twenty five. Under one ninety five, he owes me." So he only gave you five pins. He only wanted five more pins. What he said. Okay. I did hear him in shadows, though. As soon as he threw, like, three balls, he came up to me and he said, that's a pretty good bet on your part, sir. So he must think that he's not going to average 25 for the day. What's, uh, he got there? What's he got up there right now? Can you see? He hasn't uh, started off too bad there. No, he's all right. So honestly, I don't think any of these guys are in my league, so it doesn't matter who I face next week. You know, well, you're not worried. You're not worried about AJ over there or Schmall or Schmall might be the only one, but uh, everybody else, eh, they're not in my league. So that's a bold statement, sir, to be in a bold all summer. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. Every year I bowl the King of Summer Finals. The winner has to face me in the championship match. After the championship match. And, I, and I've won all but one year. Wow. And, and, and I don't bowl all summer. That's pretty impressive. All I do is out spare them. And then every year, I don't even bowl in the summer, yet I go to the Peterson in August, and I make top 100 almost every year. Three out of six years. Well, that shows you how, uh, how important spares are. Spare and, uh, shooting is key. Being consistent, you know, throughout the day, and not really worrying about the score. Lockers, uh... Look at that up there. Uh, Locker's got a three-bagger going. Yeah, he does. This ever focuses in. Come on. 
There we go. Kind of. Uh, the ever popular 2810 on long patterns is going to be seen all day today. That's right. Can't wait. Let's see how Locker. Let's see if Locker put four in a row together here. Taking a very early lead. He is ultra oh, slow looking it up together. There we go. There's another 210. Yep. Very common. So, uh, right, real quick here. Uh, there's a lot of bowlers here I don't see. I, I don't know why these guys aren't here, but can you elaborate on who should be here that's not here? Well, I mean, it's not no tap. If it was no tap, I think Chief might show up. Chief? But it had to be no tap, handicap, and a pattern that's hard for everybody else but him. And as long as he got to run brackets, then he might show up. But it, it can't be on a house shot. It can't be on a sports shot. So, where it's is got, he? It's got to be on an easy shot for him. What's going to make him show up? I, I don't know. A miracle? I don't know. Anybody else you notice uh, that should be here that's not? You know, I was really looking forward to a guy like uh, James Hester showing up today. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know why he's not here. I mean, the games are cheap, so we can afford it, you know. And yeah, but at the same time, remember, he no-showed on himself. Oh, he, he said did. He was calling himself out to come and practice for Nationals, and he didn't show up. He, he doesn't show up for anything, does he? Uh, no, he doesn't show up for anything. He won't even show up for the league that he's paying for. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I was also looking forward to bowling that uh, Matt Cano, Mexicano. But I guess he gets a pass because he did injure his shoulder. Got ran over by a go-kart by some kid. I guess he can't jump high enough over the go-kart, even though he jumped over the wall to get here. Didn't he build that wall? Probably. Okay. So where's Gene Dukes? That's another guy that should be out here. Uh, I'm going to guess um, that he's either at home with the wife or he's out shopping with the wife carrying her purse. Or he missed King of the Hill this last week because he said he was going to the Railcats game. Yeah, I mean, there's no Railcats game going on right now, so I'm going to guess that he's uh, not allowed to come out because because uh, I'm here. Are you talking about my wife or his? Uh, we're his, his for sure. Sarah likes me, so she looks good. Okay. All these bowlers should be here. These are their records. <laughs> Mr. No Show, <laughs> James Esther. Where's Ethan Ogden? E yeah, Ethan's one and one. He beat Jeremy Belko. But Jeremy Belko's here every week. You got to give him credit. He's always up for a challenge, and, and he's always better than himself, and he's getting better as he goes. Didn't he call out an open call out last week and uh, everybody no showed? That's right. Jeremy Belko was here, and nobody wanted a piece of him. I don't know. I think that, that should uh, constitute a uh, title. Even though everybody's beat him. But, but hey, they want to bowl. It's effort. He was here. They uh, he, he won via countout, I believe? Yeah, via countout. All right, so these guys have finished game one. We have Eric Locker in the lead with 215. Is it Ryan Toady, 188? And Schmall, 185. Scott Schmall, 185, yeah. Uh, AJ opened two out of the last three for 160. I still think AJ is good to win, though, over time. You think so? We got a 170 over there. What else? Uh, AJ Willis, 169. What what Belko have? 123, I believe. Oh. Not surprised. I mean, he's trying, though. He actually, uh, he actually requested lessons for me uh, sometime this summer. He wants to get better. Well, he, he did bowl very well on the 35-foot uh, cheetah-like pattern against Ethan. I mean, he did have the lead for a while, and then Ethan just, you know. Uh, that pattern kind of plays into his game a little bit, you know. He, uh, he's definitely rep challenged, and, uh, you know, the shorter pattern, especially at Indians, he's going to have his ball actually hook, and he took advantage of that. So are you saying the surface hooks? Is there a lot of friction? Inman surface definitely hooks, but they put a lot of oil down on the front part of the lane, so your ball will store a lot of energy, thus making it hook harder on the back end, uh, increasing the scores usually, unless the patterns are really hard like this one. And those people that don't know, we do use Kegel Ice Oil. That's and, the best oil to use. And the oil pump is set at 50 UL. 
I've heard rumors that people are saying that our pump is set at 40. No, it's no. set at 50 because we know what we're doing. It was, it was set at 40 when you came here originally. Actually, it was set at 25 when I got here after we tested it. And then adjusted to 40, and we realized that that wasn't enough. Right. So we made it 50, and now the shot uh, holds up well. And all the award scores, as you can see, on that red banner all the way across. We've got an award score pretty much on every lane. I forgot to put up Eric Lockers there at 27, 28. But otherwise, we'd have a award score on every single lane throughout the whole entire house. So come bowl here at mensvalpo.com. Tuesday, Thursday night, we have a trio league. Best league in the area. Real fun league. I had a good time bowling both of them last year. I'm the secretary. I take no secretary fees, so there's more money in your prize fund. There's side pots, brackets, 50-50s, strike shot. And it's handicapped, but we're here to have fun. Here to have fun, make a little money on the side. Talk a little trash on the side, which is what I like to do. All about having fun. All right, we're starting to wind down the second game here. Uh, who's going to be the first to fry? Uh, That's probably going to be Eric Locker down on the end. He, uh, he shot 215 the first game. He goes back six for 190, and he already opened. Well, what's he eating there? Pizza puff, it looks like. Well, we'll see if he gives him any energy to get him going. We'll check back in a little bit. The Tornado Eliminator, just like my league on Tuesdays. We're running a separate tournament Tuesday, July 18th, 6.45 p.m. 7 o'clock practice comes on. Same format as the Ted's Sports Shot Eliminator League on Tuesday night. Man, the best bowler win. No luck in that. 48 foot tornado pattern. I've never actually bowled in your pattern, that tornado pattern. I'm always out of town that week of that tournament. Well, you out of town this week? Are you out of town like some of these other guys, like the Chief? He's always out of town. Chief's always out of town, sitting on his couch with his feet up. We'll see if he makes this tournament. All right, we're back here. We got Eric Locker, 215, 124. What happened? Well, pattern changed a little bit and a little bit of slow hook held. So he 2810 about 20 times that game. Hey, I just realized, where's that, where's that kid that does a hair flip? <laughs> AKA Mr. Airflip. I think he's uh, he's uh, nursing uh, at a late night last night. He was out with his boys. I found a picture on the internet. Is that Marty Freeborn? He was out there in his romper. Where's the skinny jeans? Well, it's warm outside, so you got to wear the one piece. Where's he at today? Not here? He said he slept late. Uh, I think he was trying to get those skinny jeans on. Yeah, it takes a lot of uh, a little bit of swass to get him up. Swass. We're here after three. Eric Locker's at 522. Belko's at 400. That's a three game total. That's a three game, yes. Yeah. AJ's at what, 575? I think he's your leader. Nope. Nope. Small Scott guy. Small right next to him with 579. Let's see what we got going over here. 452 for. Three games. Who's this? That's <laughs> Andrew Veal. Oh, okay. And uh, Austin Shell's 521. Ryan Toady's at 473. Scores are uh, right where I expect them to be. Okay, so we have Schmall, AJ, and Locker, right? Locker by one. Yeah, Locker's up by one for third place so far. And uh, nobody would be making any money on my bet, just saying. see if Austin's uh, figured anything out here. So you can move to the middle part of the lane. Ah, these guys can't carry a he's temper. Strapping, he's strapping the pocket is what he's doing. He's playing safe. And he's hoping that his spare game kicks into high gear today and he uh, makes a run at the lead. Let's see where Andrew's at. It's like he's migrated to the middle lane too. Oh, the 5-7. Surprisingly, that's the first one I've seen today. I figured there'd be a lot more of those. I thought you'd be expecting a 5-7-10. Maybe I'll make a side bet with somebody on how many 5 7 tens happen today. All right, well, we'll check back uh, next game. All right, game four update. A.J. Willis, 7-62, is in the lead. 
Scott Schmall, 747. And then what do we got? Austin Schultz, 710. Austin Schultz, 710. Eric Locker, 706. Ryan Toady, 704. And Andrew, no, Andrew, 609. And Belko, 540. Four, five games. Four games. Four games. He's in his fifth game right now. But he's minus 220 or so to uh, the leader. The good news is, though, is that uh, he's sticking to his game plan. What's his game plan? He's going to tough it out the whole day and hope that enough people quit that he finishes the. Ah, that's that's a good strategy right there. That could happen. It could happen. I see one quitting here pretty soon on 29, I think. Because in everybody's heads right now is everyone's favorite emoji. Just to remind everybody how the scores are today and how they're doing. Nobody is averaging 200, are they? No. And, uh, see, that was a good bet on my part. Nobody wanted to take it, so uh, they must have knew that I wasn't uh, poop emoji in them. Well, A.J. Willis is averaging about 190 so far, huh? And he's the one that I picked to uh, do well. I expected A.J. to do a little bit better. Um, off the shoulder, but, uh, seems to be struggling. He did get his wisdom teeth pulled out the other day. Hmm. His face is a little swollen. Scott Small looked like he was uh, lined up at one point playing pretty straight, but uh, looks like it's gone away. I mean, all these guys are staying on the same lane all day, so. So you think they would have opened them up by now? I'm not really sure what the problem is. You know, I know we wanted to give away the games at the beginning to break the shot down, but uh, the shot's coming and going by themselves. It almost looks like they're switching lanes. Eric Locker demonstrated that the first three with his oh, 210, that's... 120, 210. Scott Schmall is uh, swinging fifth arrow right now after he was just playing up the boards. Maybe he burnt himself a line playing straight. Got to do something, but we didn't give him anything. You know, there's got to be some strategy involved here, and that might be it. My strategy would be to shoot spares, A.J. Willis style over there. We're giving away my strategy for next week. <laughs> next week's going to be fun. I think we might have a uh, format. Uh, we'll it'll announce it at the end of this tournament. All right, we'll be back with the next update pretty soon. <laughs> All right, we have our game game five update. Uh, looks like Scott Schmall is taking a one pin lead right now. He's at nine twenty four to nine twenty three over AJ Willis. Yeah, minus sixty. Was that seventy six is leading? Austin Schultz is in third with eight ninety. Making a run this game. He's doing all right. Eric Locker had 881. Ryan Toady's at 860. Andrew's at 724. And Falco. 685. 685 for five. five. game total. There's Belko's average for five games so far. So it looks like Scott Schmall just shot 160 there for game six. Uh, AJ started out with split, split spare, so we'll see if he can uh, stick around there. He could he could take a good size lead here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You gotta keep an eye on Schultz over here. He's starting to feel it. You can tell by the way he's throwing it, why he's letting go. Yeah, he is. He's starting to post him at the bottom. I mean, he's, he's only down 30. He's got a really good look right now, too. He, he may he may catch him here. He may catch him on game six. Might sneak up there for game seven and eight. So Sean Quinn's here. A little late. Guess he didn't want a piece of the king this week or next week. Sean Quinn's got to make money. This week's episode is also brought to you by Above All Bowling Supply and Pro Shop, loaded, located inside Inman's in Valparaiso, Indiana. Wide variety of bowling balls, bowling bags, and shoes. All kinds of accessories. Of all that Genesis K motion, visit AboveAllBowling.com. All right, we're almost ready here for the Game 7 update. Uh, still waiting on two bowlers, but we have uh, Austin Schultz at 13-16 with the lead now. Scott Schmall had a 113 game, which put him at 1197. 
which uh, Ryan Toady just came back and went ahead of him. He's at 12.03. I've been staying all day to watch for Schultz. I said he was going to do fine. Uh, two big games, 220-something and 205 back-to-back. That's gigantic today. What we got over there? Eric Locker's at 12.0. So he's 12.08, so he's ahead of Ryan Toady as well. But we, I see that uh, the people are fighting for two and three. I think number one's locked in with AJ. Right? Well, you never know, because go look at the... Don't forget about AJ Willis over there. He's at 10.90, and he still finished up that seven, seven, uh, second game. Blah. Eric Locker's at 12.88. 12.88. Well, that tightens it up a little bit, I guess. All right. So your one, two, three, it looks like it's going to be Austin Schultz, A.J. Willis, Eric Locker so far. Let's we'll see if uh, Ryan Tony can come back and pick up some points here. No, I didn't say what the leader gets uh, for leading this, uh, this little tournament today, so I'm going to think of something for the leader. For the what about the one who finishes last? Uh, I think you just have to wear the poop emoji hat. I think so, too. We'll be back. All right, we're here in the eighth game. A.J. Willis needs uh, strike and eight. Strike eight strike to and eight win. To win. And that picks the oil pattern for next week. He's got to have it. It's either going to be him or Austin Schultz as the number one today. Here it goes. Oh. That's not enough. Best but it's enough to it. advance. It is enough to advance. Second place. So first we had... Austin Schultz, what do you have? 14, 1484 for 8. 1484 for 8. And it looks like AJ's going to finish with. Oh, beautiful. All right, he did just finish. 14, hey, you made it. 1465. Yep. And then Eric so who's third? would be third place with. Who's that? 14. Something, I don't know. And then we had Scott Small. Scott Small, he, um, Where's Scott Small? Here in a hurry. Scott Small's not here. But he was in third. Alright, so there we have it. So we got AJ Schultz, 1484. What? What? I want to call him Marty Freeborn out on. Whatever the hell we bowled on today. Mr. Hairflip, he's you've been called out on the best of the best flat bob shot by Eric Locker. And if I beat you, you can't wear fucking skinny jeans for the next fucking year. No skinny jeans! Oh. <laughs> that kills his entire wardrobe. Can he can he wear what are those things called? What are those one, those one piece a romper? One piece oh a romper. A romper? No rompers either. Marty Freeborn, you've been called out. All right, back to the final results. AJ Schultz, 1484. AJ Willis, 1465. Eric Locker, 1442. Scott Schmall, 1345. Ryan Toady, 1342. Andrew, 1225. And Jeremy Belko, well... I don't know what he's got. Let's go find out. 11.39 for Belgo. Give him credit. He did finish today. We're thinking about the pattern for next week, huh? So uh, Austin Schultz won today, and he got to pick the pattern for next week. And he said that he wants me to design a pattern, not tell anybody, and present it next week right before we start. So... If you have any ideas for patterns, I told them it would be between 38 and 42 feet. Um, it's obviously going to be very difficult. I'm looking for um, anything harder than a 3 to 1 ratio. Um, it doesn't even have to be 3 to 1. It could be whatever. It doesn't even matter. Um, post your um, comments below and keep me posting on what you guys uh, think. Just a reminder, the king doesn't care what pattern's out there because it doesn't matter. So 
the time has come for my journey for the SGM bowling title that you, Ted Rosenquist, hold. But you're just holding it for a little bit until I get through the number one contendership next week. Found out my opponents today. A.J. Willis, Austin Schultz, Eric Locker, or maybe even you, Ryan Tony, if Eric doesn't show up. Let me give you guys a little history. I've been running tournaments for over 15 years. I've been waiting for this day to where I can jump in and show you what I can do. They call me the king of tournaments. It's not just because I run the tournaments. It's because I can dominate tournaments myself. It doesn't matter if it's a strike fest, a spare fest. I'm going to take all you guys down. Because as you know, our match play is round robin. That means each round I get to go through each and every one of you and get some extra bonus points because all you guys are going to be afraid to face me and intimidated to face me. I don't care if I have to outstrike you, but you know I'm going to outspare you the whole day. And then when all the pins fall and all the dust settles, you will be looking at the number one contender to face Ted Rosenquist the next week for his title. So boys, be ready for the royal pounding I'm going to put on you, each and every one of you. And then you will all bow down to the king. videos and the famous king of the hill friday night tournaments visit youtube.com slash bowling tournaments or visit us on facebook at facebook.com slash bowling tournaments